It's time for your mix of movers and shakers, of doers and makers. It's time for Funko Fun Chat. Today's guest, he's the voice of Hisoka in Hunter Hunter, among many others. It's Keith Silverstein. Bungee gum contains the properties of both rubber and gum, you see. Uh, my name is Keith Silverstein. I've been doing voiceover for a little over 20 years now. So uh, if you play video games or watch anime, some original animation, you may have heard me. Um, Zhang Li and Genshin Impact. This is an age of gods and monsters. Uh, Hisoka from uh, Hunter x Hunter. Half of him an angel, the other death. Hawk Moth from Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. I don't even need to do anything. And uh, Torbjorn, ready to work from Overwatch, so. My, well, my journey started off with a lot of confusion. I knew what I didn't want to do. I mean, even as a kid, I was like, I don't want to work like a straight up like nine to five. Um, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I was very envious of the kids that were like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to study this many years for that. So I floated around after school for uh, some time. Um, but uh, my uncle at one point called me up and said, hey, I know you do voices and stuff. Um, and he was, producing a, a, he was producing a documentary on some characters that he had created, basically some artwork. And uh, he needed uh, poetry read in different tribal voices. So I did that and uh, you know, I booked a couple, I auditioned for it, booked a couple characters. I just kind of fell in love with it at the time. Like I just had never thought of doing voiceover. It, the concept had never even occurred to me. Eventually I was able to uh, retire permanently from anything else. And uh, like I said, now it's been about 20 some odd years of just doing this. And uh, I couldn't imagine anything else, so. We all like to imagine there was a a gig, like if you're going to be an actor or whatever, there's going to be that one gig that like, you just blow up. And uh, I'm sure that happens on occasion for people. That wasn't really what happened with me. It was a lot of uh, smaller shows that nobody's ever heard about that I just kind of got started. But what happens with that is you start to network and you start to, to meet people. So I remember one of the things I kind of remember is I worked on a, a show, uh, Edgar and Ellen, an animated show, and they were, they needed dubbing for it. So. Um, we're adding the voices after the animation was done. And I didn't know anybody else I was working with. They brought in a whole group of us to work together at the same time, which doesn't happen too often, but uh, we did that. And um, during one of the breaks, uh, one of the guys, the other actors who was there was, I heard him mention anime. And I grew up on anime. So I was like, oh, I love anime. Anime is the best. And I kind of went through like, oh, there's, there's always the guy who explains everything. He talks like this. And there's, you know, I started doing voices and just kind of goofing around and stuff and just going, oh, it's the best. Uh, that was Kirk Thornton, who has been do, acting and doing voiceover in anime and video games forever. He directs. So he said, hey, uh, get me your information. <laughs> I was like, oh, um, okay. And he brought me into uh, Bang Zoom Entertainment Studios. And um, I started doing anime from there. And from there, it just kind of branched out. And that's how everything was. I treated every session, every gig, um, like it was the most important gig I could possibly have because you never know what director you're gonna be in front of or what producer you're gonna be in front of or who's gonna hear it afterwards or see it. But I don't know if even that one you could point to because there's, I could tell you another five stories about somebody else I met on a different gig and then it, it led to this or that or the other thing. I don't think my parents really understood uh, where I was going in terms of career-wise uh, until I got there. Um, now, uh, to their credit, I had a lot of support from them, whatever they wanted to do. Now, I was adopted, so uh, they're very different than me. Um, so they were very much, you know, go to school, go to college, become a lawyer, a doctor, you know, whatever. It's something that makes sense professionally to do. So acting, I mean, they definitely backed me up. They showed up at every one of my, you know, productions that I did, you know, stage productions and such. Um, so they always supported me, but I, I don't think they had any idea, and I think they're very relieved now and I've, I've had conversations with my mom where she's like I'm so glad you landed on your feet because uh, you know your father and I had no idea where you were going and we, but I did always have their support I think they just were like <laughs> come on Keith figure this out so yes I am absolutely totally a collector at heart and that is why I say I do have to limit myself I um, I collect vinyl Specifically, I mentioned I'm a Prince fan. I collect Prince and Prince-related vinyl. I've got at least 2,000, 2,500 records at home. Uh, you know, all prints from all over the world, uh, promotional stuff, acetates, test pressings, whatever, right? 
Um, and that takes up a certain amount of space in the house. I have really nice, uh, you know, storage for them so the wife doesn't get upset with this. Um, and I also, not in the house, but I have a Magic the Gathering collection. I've been playing since 1994, so I have an incredible amount of cards and sealed boxes and all kinds of fun stuff. Now I grew up watching, I mean I'm old school for like anime, so it was you know Speed Racer, Kimba the White Lion, Marine Boy, there were some like Shogun Warrior type shows that I used to watch, so I didn't even know they were called anime at that time, I just knew that those type of shows were really cool to me. Then this anime came around called uh, Robotech, and that kind of cemented it for me, because even though I like these other two, there was something I noticed, I, I mean even in my high school days, I noticed that you know in G.I. Joe or in Transformers, whenever something blew up, you always saw the you know, parachutes come out and the guys were okay. And in Robotech, like something would blow up and you'd see the flames and you'd see the bodies inside ah, as they scream and they dissolve. It wasn't gross, but it was clearly depicted that they did not survive. And uh, there was something about that that I just, I really liked. I just, uh, the seriousness of it, the, you know, it was a little heavier. It was a little like, oh, this is, they're not messing around. Like people actually die here, uh, which just made for better stories, uh, I think. That's when I really started searching it out. So when I was a kid, I watched it because it happened to be on. I was like, I don't know what this is, but I love it. And then uh, as I got a little older teenage years, that's when I went, what is this? Anime? Okay, I know what this is. I used to watch this stuff. This stuff's great. So it was nice, and I'm sure uh, that did help me, you know, in terms of whatever I just absorbed from watching that stuff. Even though the old dubs were, were I'll be honest, some of them were pretty bad. <laughs> um, well, there's, I have two answers for that. Um, I'm a big Marvel fan, so anybody Marvel would be great, and always is, but um, Daredevil's been my fave. So uh, personally, it would be very fun to, to at some point get to voice Daredevil, that would be great. But what's cooler than voicing a great character that's already got a bunch of great names attached to it? It's voicing that character that doesn't exist yet. So to voice the, for, so Tom Kenny voices SpongeBob SquarePants, but pre-Tom Kenny, there was no SpongeBob SquarePants. So to voice another Joker, even if people love it, would be fantastic. Don't get me wrong, I would love it. But um, it's that next character that nobody really knows yet. And, uh, and we, I've had a few opportunities at that. I mean, Overwatch is a good example with Torbjorn. Torbjorn and Overwatch did not exist at that point. Um, I, I came in before the game existed. It was still, wasn't even in beta yet. But to me, that's the kind of thing. So whatever that next gig is, that is an original thing that people will associate with my voice, that's the ideal for me. But Daredevil would be cool too. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Nice. Excellent. I like this picture of me here. Oh, you see, I've got bungee gum. Bungee gum contains the properties of both rubber and gum, you see. <laughs> I'm beginning to get excited. <laughs> now that's a fun chat, but there's more. Check out these other interviews and more fun stuff on Funko Fun TV.